we were discussing convection dominated transport in the limit of high Peclet number where the diffusion from solid surfaces perpendicular to the surface causes a disturbance to the concentration or temperature field very close to the surface within a boundary layer of thickness delta. As the Peclet number becomes large this boundary layer thickness becomes small. However, when the coordinate perpendicular to the surface is scaled by this boundary layer thickness delta and you get a similarity variable. The equation in terms of that similarity variable is independent of Peclet number. So, that convection and diffusion continue to be dominant within this boundary layer even in the limit as Peclet number goes to infinity. Cross stream convection and uh, I am sorry uh, cross stream diffusion and convection both stream wise and cross stream. Okay. We had previously looked at the case for the flow past a flat plate and for the flow past a spherical particle where there were no slip boundary conditions on the surface. In that case the tangential velocity increases proportional to distance from the surface it is proportional to the boundary layer thickness. Therefore, the convective term is proportional to the Peclet number times the velocity which is Peclet number times the boundary layer thickness. In the diffusion term I have two derivatives with respect to the cross stream direction therefore, that goes as 1 over delta square straight away that gives you delta goes as Peclet number to the one third. And we looked at how to get solutions in that case the equation there are two parts to the equation ok. The first part is the equation for okay. yeah, the first part is the equation for the similarity solution ok. The first part is the equation for the similarity variable itself. The condition that this particular function has to be 1 or a constant if the resulting equation in terms of the similarity variable is independent of Peclet number. The second one is the equation for the concentration field itself. In that case we saw that the equation for the concentration field is independent of uh, the configuration it is the same for a flat plate for a spherical particle and so on. Only the variation of the boundary layer thickness changes the flux goes as p power plus one third ok it is proportional to 1 over the boundary layer thickness because diffusion is enhanced by factor of 1 over delta ok because the flux is proportional to the gradient of the concentration field ok. So, in that case we always get a Sherwood number proportional to Peclet number to the one third power. In all cases where you have a solid surface where the velocity is 0 at the surface due to the no slip condition. Then we had looked at a liquid gas interface where the velocity is finite a falling film. In that case the velocity is actually non-zero at the surface at y is equal to 0 the velocity is just equal to u. Velocity is finite at the surface therefore, the convection term is proportional to the Peclet number. The diffusion term goes as 1 over delta square because it has a second derivative with respect to the cross stream distance. Therefore, Peclet number should be proportional to 1 over delta square or delta should go as Peclet number to the minus half power ok. And that is what we had got for the falling film ok. Delta goes as Peclet number to the minus half power ok. And based upon that we got an Sherwood number which goes as Peclet number to the plus half because diffusion is enhanced by a factor of 1 over the boundary layer thickness. So, boundary layer thickness goes as Peclet to the minus half the diffusion flux will go as Peclet number to the plus half. This was for a falling film and last class I was trying to solve for you the equation for the flow past a spherical bubble. In this case as well the stream wise velocity along the theta direction in this case along the surface theta is the stream wise direction. The stream wise velocity is non-zero the cross stream velocity is proportional to the distance from the surface. So, there is a slip condition at the surface the stream wise velocity is not 0 because of slip a 0 shear stress condition. The cross stream velocity has to be 0 because there is no penetration perpendicular to the surface and it increases proportional to the distance from the surface. So, with this we can write down our equation ok. 
in this case this is the Peclet number based upon the radius of the sphere. Okay. So, the equation becomes Peclet number into u r. Okay. If you recall u r was minus cos theta delta eta the whole square. Okay. from the previous side the u r was equal to minus delta eta cos theta okay. I am sorry it should be delta eta okay. it is linear okay. into partial c by partial r okay. that will give me 1 by delta partial c by partial eta okay. u theta was sin theta by 2 okay. it was finite at the surface. Now, partial c by partial theta is equal to okay, using chain rule for differentiation. We know that eta is equal to r minus 1 by delta okay, or alternatively the distance from the surface was exp expressed as 1 plus delta eta. Okay. And this model layer thickness delta is a function of theta. Okay. So, partial eta by partial theta okay, is equal to minus of r minus 1 okay, by delta square d delta by d theta okay, is equal to minus eta by delta d delta by d theta. Okay. So, for this will be equal to partial c by partial eta into So, here I get okay. so that is the convective term. Okay. If you recall for the diffusion term, okay, partial C by partial R star okay, was equal to. One by delta partial c by partial eta. Okay, and if you take a second derivative, you'll just get a factor of one over delta square. Okay. So those are the convection and the diffusion terms. Okay, in this equation. Okay. And now, of course, I multiply throughout by delta square and then solve subject to the boundary conditions. Okay. Into delta square okay, minus sin theta Okay, so that is my convection diffusion equation. Okay, I'm sorry, there should be a sine theta by two here. Okay, you can easily verify when I multiply throughout by delta square, I'll get a factor of delta square in the first term here, and the factor of delta in the second term here. You have common factors of eta on both terms. Okay, so I can write this as. Now, in this equation, this term has to be a constant in the limit as Peclet number goes to infinity for this solution equation to have a similarity solution. Okay. That constant can be any value. Okay. It is convenient to choose it just equal to 1. Okay. Peclet number into cos theta delta square plus sin theta delta. 
equal to 1. That is the equation for the boundary layer thickness. The equation for the concentration field is minus eta partial c by partial eta is equal to partial square c by partial eta square. This equation we have already seen before. It was identical to what we had in the case of a falling film. Okay. Okay. In the case of a falling film, we had exactly the same equation. Okay. If you recall for the falling film case also we had exactly the same equation. So, the solution will turn out to be exactly the same. Okay. The solution for this will be equal to C star is equal to 1 minus root of 2 by pi integral 0 to eta. Okay. And the flux J which is equal to uh, D into C naught minus C infinity by R into partial C star by partial eta okay. will be equal to minus root of 2 by pi So, those turn out to be exactly the same as we had for the flat falling film problem. Okay. So, those equations are the same. What is different is the equation for the boundary layer thickness. Okay. What is different is the equation for the boundary layer thickness. You have to solve it exactly the same way that we had done it earlier for the case of a spherical particle. I would not go through the details. You have to separate it out into a homogeneous part and a particular solution that particular solution you have to get by using an integrating factor and if you do all of that okay, what you will ultimately get okay, is that this delta okay, is equal to Peclet number to the minus half not surprising because Peclet number times delta square is 1. So, it has to go as Peclet number to the minus half divided by sin square theta into c minus 3 cos theta plus cos of 3 theta by 3 whole to the half power. Okay. Now, the constant is determined from the condition that at theta is equal to 0. Okay. If you recall for the spherical particle theta is equal to 0, okay, this is theta. So, theta is equal to 0 is the upstream uh, stagnation point along the upstream axis. Since the flow is incident on the bubble at this upstream section, okay, it goes around the bubble, it is incident on the bubble, the boundary layer thickness has to be finite there. Okay. That will give you what is the value of this constant. The fact that this has to be finite means that this numerator has to also go to 0 because I have a sin square theta in the denominator. Okay. And that translates into a constant which is 8 by 3. So, that is the equation for the boundary layer thickness and this is the equation for the flux. Okay. Um, in the flux equation my apologies I should have had a boundary layer thickness delta because if I scale it by eta I get 1 over delta there okay. Okay, because I am scaling it by the cross stream distance. Cross stream distance is eta times delta. Okay, the scale distance and that times the radius is the uh, dimensional cross stream distance. Okay. So, from this I can get the correlation. Okay. This delta had a Peclet number to the minus half, so I get p power plus half okay, in this. And then I, when I take the square root, the, if you recall, delta was equal to p power minus half by sin square theta into 8 by 3 minus cos. Three cos theta plus cos of three theta by three, okay, or half. Okay, that was the expression. Therefore, 
when I take 1 over delta I will get sin square theta divided by 8 by 3 minus 3 cos theta the average flux okay the average flux in the radial direction is going to be equal to the surface integral of this okay when you take the surface integral I will get c naught minus c infinity by r Peclet number to the half root of 2 by pi okay the only thing that depends upon theta is this one okay. So, the surface average is going to be equal to 1 by the surface area Okay, integral okay from 0 to 2 pi of d phi integral 0 to pi of d theta into r square sin theta the area element is r sin theta d phi times r d theta okay so I will get an r square sin theta here times this function sin square theta divided by And I have to do this integral, okay. I have to do this integral. Uh, once I do that, then I can write down the Sherwood number as equal to 2 times the average flux by d into c naught minus c infinity divided by r, okay. Because it is usually defined in terms of the particle diameter rather than the particle radius, so that is why the factor of 2, okay. And you can easily see if you go through the calculation, these r's will cancel out. Okay. This d into c naught minus c infinity by r will cancel out with this one. Okay. And I will get a constant times Peclet number to the half okay. and that constant if you calculate this integral turns out to be 0 0.924 where the Peclet number is now de defined based upon the particle radius not the particle diameter. If you define it in terms of the particle diameter this has to be reduced by a factor of 1 over root 2. Okay, because the radius is one half of the diameter. Okay. So, depending upon how you define it in terms of the radius, this is what the Sherwood number is given by. It is equal to Peclet number to the half. That is because the part of the equation, the similarity part where the concentration was expressed in terms of the similarity variable was identical to what we had for the flat plate. The other part, the boundary layer thickness part was different and that boundary layer thickness part enters only into this averaging and therefore it affects only this constant here. Okay. So, no slip conditions, Peclet number to the one third for the flux, Peclet number to the minus one third for the boundary layer thickness. Slip condition, Peclet number to the plus half for the flux, Peclet number to the minus half for the boundary layer thickness. Why is that? Let us take any simple configuration. Okay. okay, it can be some curved surface. You know, if the boundary layer thickness is small compared to the surface curvature, this boundary layer effect looks effectively like a flat boundary layer. If the boundary layer thickness is small compared to the curvature of the surface, this does not apply. Of course, if the boundary layer thickness is comparable to the curvature. We have to know only what are the velocities close to the surface. Okay. X is the cross stream distance, and Y is the I am sorry x is the stream wise distance at any point locally in this flow and y is the cross stream distance at that point. Okay. The velocity in the x direction okay, has to necessarily scale, okay. it has to increase with distance from the surface, it has to increase linearly with distance from the surface. Okay. It has to scale as some function of x times y. Okay, some function of x times y. Okay. This function, this is the strain rate at the surface that may very well depend upon the location of the surface, okay. but wherever it is the velocity has to be 0 at the surface itself. So, the velocity has to increase linearly with the y coordinate from the surface that constant the strain rate in that can very well depend upon the stream wise location. Okay. For an incompressible flow if you recall when we did fluid mechanics I had told you that the divergence of the velocity has to be equal to 0 okay, which means that partial u x by partial x plus okay, 
which means that partial u y by partial y is equal to minus d a by d x times y okay, if I assume this form for the stream wise velocity okay, which means that u y is equal to minus 1 by 2 d a by d x y square plus some constant. However, we know that the y velocity also has to be 0 at the surface there is no penetration and therefore this constant is 0 okay, which implies that u y is equal to minus half d a by d x into y square. So, those are necessarily the forms of the velocity. We saw that both in the case of flow past a flat plate as well as the flow past a sphere, the velocity in the x direction was increasing linearly from the surface. In the case of flow past a flat plate, u y was identically 0. That is because a was independent of x. Okay, it was strained, it was same everywhere. For the flow past a sphere, a of x was non-zero and that is why u y went as y square. In my convection diffusion equation, okay, ux partial okay, I'll just write in terms of the dimensionless form. Okay. Okay. At the surface location if I were to write okay, eta is equal to y by delta of x okay, where delta is the boundary layer thickness I okay, will get a of x delta okay, partial c by partial x okay, we had evaluated this will go as minus eta by delta d delta by dx partial c by partial eta. Okay. We had evaluated this using the chain rule if you recall. Okay. So, that is the first term in the equation. The second term is u y. Okay. This is minus 1 by 2 okay. d a by d x okay. into delta square y square. Okay. Partial c by partial y was 1 over delta partial c by partial eta. Okay. This goes as d by delta square partial square c by partial eta square. Okay. Multiply throughout by delta square by d okay. then I will get minus a of x okay. delta square okay. d delta by d x okay. plus 1 by 2 d a by d x delta cubed. Okay. My apologies over here it should not be y square it should be eta square okay, because the y square here has been written has been written as okay, eta square times delta square. Okay. And so I get delta cubed okay, into eta square d c star by d eta is equal to d partial square c star by partial eta square okay. and I should take the diffusion coefficient over to the left hand side. Okay. So, this is the similarity equation. Okay. This is the similarity equation. I forgot the factor of eta here which comes out of this y here. Okay. So, it should be delta times eta that gives us a factor of eta square. Okay. Therefore, I have one part of the equation a of x delta square by d, d delta by d x plus 1 by 2 d delta cubed d a by d x okay, times minus eta square d c by d eta is equal to d square c by d eta square. Okay. So, that was the differential equation as you can see for any form of the velocity past any surface what changes are these a and d a by d x those things change. This equation for the concentration field in terms of the similarity variable remains exactly the same. 
this was the same form we got for a flat plate, same form we got for a sphere. Therefore, the concentration in terms of the similarity variable is exactly the same regardless of configuration for the simple requirement that u x has to increase linearly from the surface which means u y has to go as the square of the distance from the surface. Okay. What changes is this one okay. and for specific forms of A we have to solve this to find out what is the boundary layer thickness. Okay. So, this has the form 1 over d okay, times a by 3 okay, d delta cubed by dx plus delta cubed by 2 d a by dx. Okay. This has to be equal to 1. Okay. Depending upon the form of A, we have to solve this in order to find out what is the boundary layer thickness. That changes the solution for C star is exactly the same 1 minus 3 power 2 by 3 by gamma of 1 third okay. integral okay, 0 to eta prime eta I am sorry okay. that remains exactly the same the flux equation okay, at the surface y is equal to 0 is exactly the same. Okay d into c naught minus c infinity okay, divided by delta okay, into 3 power 2 by 3 by gamma of 1 third. That remains exactly the same. I just need to know what is delta in order to solve for the flux for individual configurations. Okay. So, that is the reason we got exactly the same result for all problems involving a no slip condition at the surface. What about problems involving a slip condition? In this case, the velocity at the surface is non-zero. Okay. The velocity at the surface, there could be a non-zero strain rate, but the velocity at the surface is non-zero, which means u x at the surface, okay. if I have a coordinate system here x and y, u x is equal to some function a of x. And I need the no slip condition is that which means that u y is equal to minus e of x times y. Okay. Just integrating this once. Okay. Partial u y by partial y is minus, and I should apologize here, this is minus. Partial u x by partial x is d a by d x and therefore u y is minus d a by d x into y. Okay. Then I have the equation u x partial c by partial x plus okay. and I substitute for u x and u y in this okay. and And then I substitute y is equal to delta times eta. First term becomes a of x into minus eta by delta okay, into partial c by partial eta. Okay. The second term minus a, I am sorry. expressing everything in terms of delta times eta where delta is a function of x and when we take the derivative with respect to x we have to do differentiation by chain rule. This is something that I have done repeatedly in this case. Okay. Divide by delta multiply I am sorry multiply by delta square divide by d okay, to get a dimensionless equation. I get 1 over d okay, into a of x delta d delta by dx okay, plus d a by d x okay, into delta square okay. Okay. and then I have a factor of eta here on both terms, there is a factor of eta on both terms okay. 
So, therefore, I can express this in the familiar form okay. 1 over d into a delta d delta by d x plus two term two equations one again one in terms of delta 1 by d into a by 2 okay d delta by dx plus delta square sorry, d delta square by dx is equal to 1 for the similarity condition to be satisfied and then the equation of the concentration field The latter, the equation for the concentration field has a common solution C star is equal to root of 2 by pi I am sorry, and you have to solve this equation for the boundary layer thickness as a function of A of x. This was the same equation that we had got both for the flat film and for the part uh, for the bubble. Concentration was the same. The flux is equal to d into c minus divided by delta times okay, root of 2 by pi okay, at the surface. That is the flux. Delta you have to know as a function of the stream wise distance x. Average flux integrate 1 over delta over the stream wise distance and divide by the total distance and you will get the average flux and from that you get the Nusselt number correlation. So, we get the same equation regardless of configuration for this concentration field in terms of the similarity variable only thing that changes is the equation for the boundary layer thickness that depends upon the details of the flow field. Since the boundary layer thickness goes as Peclet number to the minus half uh, I am sorry Peclet number to the minus half in all of these problems the flux goes as Peclet number to the plus half and therefore, the Nusselt number, Sherwood number are proportional to Peclet number to the plus half. So, this com completes our discussion of forced convection boundary layer. Okay. Forced convection means the velocity field is specified for you and the boundary layer means that the concentration disturbances are restricted to thin regions near the boundary. Okay. In all cases, no slip condition, boundary layer thickness goes as P e power minus one third the Sherwood number Nusselt number go as Peclet number to the plus one third. Slip boundary condition the boundary layer thickness goes as Peclet to the minus half the Sherwood number Nusselt number goes as Peclet number to the plus half and I have tried to give you a physical understanding of why that is so in all such cases. The constant changes depending upon the configuration but the correlation remains exactly the same. Next class I will go on to natural convection but before that I will give a brief description of a process called Taylor dispersion, axial dispersion in a pipe and how that is enhanced by convection. We will proceed with this in the next lecture. We will see you then.